session and what we saw overnight. We're joined by Chris Weston from IG in Melbourne. Chris, great to have your company on the show. Morning. Talk us through um, what we saw overnight, Chris, in terms of the Hong Kong demonstrations and protests continuing. Why did we see that impact global markets overnight, Europe and the US in particular? Well, I mean, Hong Kong's still a, a major global powerhouse, uh, and you know, obviously, the ramifications through there um, on the economy would 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 probably send shockwaves through China as well. Uh, I think there's obviously other things that we can look at as well. I mean, there was some selling coming through in in Spanish bonds. Um, you know, the, 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 there's going to be a potential referendum on, or the, there was certainly Mr. Rajoy there tried to block a potential referendum on mm. on uh, November 9th, and, and and that could seriously play out into investors' psyches as well, especially if they uh, Arthur Mass like looks to try and bypass this by having a regional uh, regional uh, by-election which would be in some ways the same as, as as a referendum so that's that's one other thing that plays in so there was a little bit of geopolitics coming through I mean what we saw from the demonstrations last night in Hong Kong was probably a little bit um, I suppose less aggression mm. uh, they look quite peaceful in comparison to what we saw in Sunday um, but we do know as well there's a Hong Kong China exchange or bypass that's coming through in, in early October and I think that's part of the reason why the Chinese market is still very very strongly the, the anticipation of a lot of Funds getting getting a bypass from Hong Kong into China probably is, is keeping that market fairly fairly buoyed up there. Um, but you know, if you look at Hong Kong's economics, it has been fairly strong. I mean, they've got very low unemployment. They've got a very strong economy. Mm. Um, they've got CPI numbers around four percent, which isn't too hot. Um, and you know, so I think it's the concern that perhaps if these demonstrations really take hold, um, and then violence really does start striking out, perhaps the Chinese government can become much more aggressive in this role. Uh, and that, that would obviously create um, bigger tensions around the region. But uh, you know, if you look at the buy, if you look at the S&P, I mean, we opened up on the, on the back foot, and then buyers just stepped straight into the market. So it was mm. good to see the bulls were firmly in control there. Um, you know, there was some, uh, I suppose, some buying of U.S. Treasuries, which suggests there was some safe haven demand. But yeah, ultimately, I think you know, good buying from the lows. We're still going to open down today. I mean, we saw that from the spy futures, as you just mm. rightly pointed out. Um, but you know, I think there wasn't an all-out collapse for sure. That intraday volatility, though, is key, Chris. I mean, I think the Dow was down about a percent at one point, then then closed down about a quarter. Of, the S and P, sorry, was down about a percent, I think, and then closed down at just a quarter of a percent. I mean, this intraday volatility volatility is key. Are you expecting this to continue going forward? And, and do we take cues from this in our local market? Well, we do. I mean, I think if you're just looking at the the equity volatility, mm. if one looks at the, the the US VIX, which measures the uh, the volatility within, within the um, within the S&P, and obviously the demand for put options there. What I think is interesting is is despite the um, the S&P seeing that good buying from the lows, the the VIX last night was still up 7.6 percent. So that mm. suggests to me that the bulls are probably quite happy to hold on to their long positions within the equity market and within the futures markets, but they're probably just protecting themselves a little bit through optionality, which I think is probably quite a bullish thing to think about. Um, uh, but the, uh, the VIX is at the moment is around that 16% level, which is probably about 18% above the year's average. So that has picked up a little bit, as you say. But it's not just been in the equity market, though. Uh, we've seen big volatility spikes coming through in the FX markets. Mm. We've seen it coming through in the bond market. And what we've been seeing for quite a peri large period of time is, is investments and, and trading strategies formed on low volatility structures, you know, things like people picking up carry, for example, in the FX market, people looking to, to go into the peripheral bond market because of the low volatility. That's changing as we go into this transition mechanism uh, phase, I suppose. People are obviously looking at the ECB, people looking at the fact that they're targeting their balance sheet they're targeting a weaker euro, mm. what's happening in Japan, the dollar's breaking out. There's some really interesting trends that are happening in markets as we go into this transformation or trans, uh, transformation situation where people look at the Fed, and that's going to create volatility. There's no doubt about that. You know, are we in a situation where the U.S. economy can handle um, you know, interest rate rises probably mid next year, which mm. seems to be consensus now? And if, uh, you know, as a result, people are going to buy volatility, though. Yeah, and Chris, we've been hearing some commentary from Fed officials as well, uh, particularly talk on that U.S. dollar. What are they saying? Well, there's been a number. I mean, it's going to happen. I mean, we've seen the dollar index break out through multi-year uh, multi downtrends. The dollar index, uh, sorry, the, the, the dollar yen, really, at the, mm. the heart of that euro dollar, really moving lower. Uh, and, you know, people from the ECB are, uh, seem to be welcoming uh, the euro weakness. But, you know, we saw Bill Dudley the other day. He's a permanent member. He's, he's part of the core with Janet Yellen. Uh, and, you know, he came, out, he came out with very interesting comments suggesting that the dollar is going to potentially be a headwind to that 2% inflation target. But I think he sort of justified that by saying that it's probably 
because it's the best looking house on the block and you mm. know, there's cyclical factors in play. I mean Charles Evans last night, Charles Evans is not a voter this year, um, he is the Chicago president, he came out and, and said very similar situations. Much more dovish though, uh, and perhaps that's probably a, a, maybe a reason why we did see some, you know, the 10 year tick down five basis points last night. He's actually looking for rates to go up in Q1 of 2016. But again, you know, talking about the US dollar strength coming through and they're going to try and push back on that a little bit. I mean the dollar is the, um, you know, just is on the absolute fire at the moment. It's way overbought, but you know, any kind of pullbacks, mm. people are just jumping on straight away. I thought it was interesting um, that, that Ford came out and actually downgraded their earnings or ground their guidance for European growth based on that stronger US yeah. dollar. So we're seeing that at corporate level as well now, and I think it feeds into the idea that, you know, 2015, one of my central thesis is going to be around global currency wars. I think mm. we're going to see one that the likes that we haven't seen before. Talk as well from some economists in the US overnight that a 10% rise in the US dollar um, equates to about a half percent fall in GDP there, in US GDP. Could this at all put a spanner in the works to Janet Yellen's plans to rise interest rates? Well, I mean, GDP by itself is, it, is, is extremely linked to, to inflation. Mm. Um, I think what you've got to look at here is inflation expectations. We look at inflation, but I think if you look at inflation expectations, you can measure that through the swaps market, you can measure that through the bond market. Um, inflation expectations in the US have been coming off very sharply. I mean, if you look at break-evens, which for, for all intents and purposes is just basically the difference between five-year bonds and five-year treasuries and, and treasury inflation protected securities, a bit of a mouthful, but <laughs> if you look at that, they, they were pricing in an average of 2.1% um, inflation over the, the next five years, mm. and that was back in June. If you look at what's happened now with the big moves we've seen in the dollar in the you know, broad weight, uh, trade weighted basis, uh, that's now around 1.68%, so they've dropped fairly sharply. I mean, you look at European inflation expectations, that at 1.92% over the next five years. Uh, you look at Japanese inflation expectations, they've been coming off sharply. Uh, not it's very difficult to measure it in Australia, but you know, if you look at the core major economies, inflation expectations have been coming off very sharply. And what's the concerning thing here is, despite the Europeans, um, you know, putting imposing negative deposit rates, and we've seen a major correction there. And you know, if the, the ECB work on the premise that a 10% decline on the euro actually increases uh, inflation by 40 to 50 basis points, uh, it's not really having much of a desired effect. And that's a big worry. Um, so yeah, I do. I do to, sorry to answer your question. Hmm. Uh, absolutely, um, th there will be a situation where if the dollar continues the way it's going, and if you put it in the broad scheme of things, the dollar move is very small in comparison to what we've seen over history. Then there will be a time where inflation expectations continue to fall, and that will that will be a subtraction to what's being priced in. Because remember, being next next five uh, next year, the market's pricing in, or certainly the the, the Fed have surveyed that we're going to see five rate hikes next year. That's not going to happen if you get the dollar continuing to do mm. what, it's, what it's doing at the moment. All right, Chris, we'll leave it there, but thanks so much for all that analysis. Thanks very much. Chris Weston there. From